Okay, I gotta, I gotta cut it now. Um, shit. Every time I think I have something clever to say, I see that transition and I'm like, well, I've just undercut myself, haven't I? I had a, I had a pretty, pretty brilliant thought though, just now. I want to immortalize. We're about to play Quake 2 RTX. I should say that right off the top. About to play Quake 2 RTX. It's a game with rocking music and a lot of blinky lights. It's got ray tracing. So pretty good fit for the day, I think. THC Tuesday. Here we go. Here's my here's my brilliant thought right now. Okay. Uh not only is WandaVision pretty brilliant about like bridging the gap between like the main arc of whatever MCU has been now and what it will be in the future, um, stylistically, but it is also pretty amazing that it is a comic book culture thing that actually deals with death in a pretty meaningful way. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Comics are usually really terrible at death. It's usually used as just like a gimmick to uh, to artificially raise the stakes sometime or make or make something seem more meaningful and and lasting than it is. Of course, it isn't ever in comics, but um, this. Uh, this is presuming a lot, but it, it does seem to be a show focused on, uh, you know, Wanda uh, not processing the loss properly, which is interesting because it never happened on camera either. Usually you just presume that people are sad, but they get over it, you know, off camera somewhere. We don't want to see that. We want to see muscular people punching each other. Uh, but um, th this is pretty fascinating that in a comic book culture thing, there's actually an entire plot arc devoted to a character trying to process loss. Which is an incredibly difficult thing to do, especially if you have superpowers. Uh, what is RTX? It is NVIDIA's branded version of ray tracing. And Robert, if you want to know what ray tracing is, that's going to require a bit more explanation. But the uh, you were you were worrying over B stars and Discord. Ah, you don't have too much to worry about the anime so far. They haven't gotten to the shonenization that happens in the latest arc. Oh, I, I'm I'm worried about the basic the basic setup of the story. And how dudes dealing with, well, I I have a whole I have a whole diatribe loaded up on B stars, but I don't want to I don't want to presume too much and then and then get into that. But what I mean, what concerns me, and and to 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 some degree, I think I have yet to see a whole lot of uh, refutation of this, but like that in that show, um, uh, carnivorism is just associated with masculinity. And being an herbivore is associated with being a female. You know, that predator-prey relationship that people like to impose on heteronormative relationships. Uh, so that's concerning, especially when you consider that the people who regularly dine on anime may not have really well-formed ideas there. Um, and there's, there's some things about it that are, are saying really interesting things about that dynamic, but other things that are kind of leaning into the anime thing of like, here's a, you know, here's a quiet dude with like a demon inside. And that's like every, that's like every shitty nerd at 17. Um, it really is. So, so I'm like, are, are we dealing with this? The guy who's outwardly like awkward, but he has a hidden destiny. If only he learns to embrace his inner, his inner power, which in this case, his inner power is being a sexual predator. And that's a, Okay, that's that's a scary setup. Now I, I have gotten a few episodes in, and there is there's some there's some acknowledgement there. There was there was a, a particular event. I'm trying to stay away from spoilers, but um, it uh, it makes me think that the show understands what it's doing, and that's important as opposed to just selling a, a another sexual fantasy to anime fans. How far are you into it? About five levels, about or <laughs> levels episodes, whatever. Everything is a video game. Uh, so, you know, there was a thing on stage and I'm like, oh, there's guilt there and it's being externalized. Great. That is exactly what somebody who is not in tune with their emotions would do. Um, yeah, no, of course I am, JC. Come on. Uh, but, um, there are only five episodes of the moment. stars? No, there was a whole, there was a whole season, isn't there? Eh? Oh, you're talking about WandaVision. Oh, okay. I was get my wires crossed. How'd you do after Saturday? You mean after Friday? I personally think of the carnivore herbivore stuff as classism. Well, given that given that carnivores are overwhelmingly depicted as male, um, I don't know. 
I, I read it as it's it's a it's an analog for sexuality, but it could be classism too. It just doesn't read that way very much uh, to me. After the drunk streams, I was hungover. Well, I just I I eat burgers and <laughs> and uh, rolled around on the couch until I finally uh, got over it. Quake has a story. But yeah. Quake 2 and 4 have a story. Quake 1 has a story that's different. And Quake 3 does not have a story. What's your favorite hangover food? It depends. I, I get pretty impulsive when I'm hungover. This time it was burgers. But yeah, bacon's good. Something like greasy. Something that like coats your stomach. M. Dimp, you're gonna have to... Might have to, might have to roll back the internet, internet edginess a smidge. Uh, any chance you'll do another Max Payne 3 stream? Probably. Man, that game's so good. Needed to feel alive. I understand. I I'm in touch with my inner edge lord too. Sometimes, so it's important to remember that part of yourself. So yeah, Quake Two. It's basically aliens. Um, bunch of marines airdrop onto Strogos, an alien planet of the Strog, who are invading uh, Earth, and now we're invading them. Except it went really poorly. And you end up being one of the last space marines alive. But luckily, you're the protagonist in a 90s video game. So you uh, you have a gun and you can shoot all the aliens. Uh, Dimp, thank you very much for the sub. Sorry to spoil the intro for you guys. Oh yeah, and there's a very big gun. It's called the big gun. That's basically the point of the game, is to take out this, like, artillery gun that keeps shooting down incoming ships. They reference it in Quake 4. Quake 4 by Raven Software, the canon sequel to Quake 2, is one of the stupidest and most fun shooters ever. Raven Software was really good at making those. Alright, Quake 2 RTX. Yeah! Oh, I should have looked at that more. So this game is ray traced, which means that little light bolts get reflected accurately all around the room. Whoa. Oh, we got a VIP or ban? Excellent, Clippy. Congratulations on flying where eagles dare. Actually, this is gonna sound weird over this music, so... Whatever, who cares? Just be a cacophony of sound. Oh no! No, Clippy! Can't even hear! What? Clippy! Oh boy, it's not happy with me there. Jesus Christ. Alright, I'll just I'll just do that so it's not horrible. Clippy, you've been a wonderful member of chat. A very uh very generous member of chat too, but unfortunately. Uh, orders is orders. So... <laughs> that audio became clippy too? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you being in chat, but I gotta do it. I gotta put you- I gotta put you in hell. Rules is rules. Gotta put you in hell for an hour. Sad. Sad day for Clippy. But, uh, don't worry. In another three years, you might have enough- enough points to try again. That's what it's all about. I gotta lower the sensitivity a bit. Uh, as soon as I figure out where to do that. What if I went to a two? Oh, that was weird. Alright. So yes, behold. Behold the power of ray tracing. I think there's some, like, fans and stuff later that, that make it a little more obvious. I have to establish communications. All the walls are shiny. You can see reflections on the tip of my gun. 
This is what games could look like in the future, you guys. There is a there is an interesting like softness and blend to all the lighting that it does create a, a I would say a pretty pretty different image, but it can be hard to appreciate that without seeing what the game looks like or used to look like side by side. You know what? I have the power to do that. One second. Oh, I don't know if this is just going to run in like... Uh, I don't know if they put GL Quake in here. Well, Quake 2 had hardware. We'll see what happens. We'll just look at the intro real quick. Just got Chex Quest running RTX. Nice. Everything needs to run RTX. Me, you, everything. Benji Bubs, thank you for the sub. Uh, Tire Tiefling, thank you as well. And Man Mountain, thanks for the sub. Heard there was a VAP or banned. I dropped everything. Well, thank you for heading on back. Oh my god. Alright. Yeah. There are patches to make it like widescreen, but I'm not gonna put that much effort into it. Uh so it's not ah, fuck. It's gonna restart every time. Oh, wait, another? Ooh, Alder Irish. In with another VIP or ban. Well, you get it over you get it over the uh the no signal screen, isn't that exciting? It never came back. God damn it. It crashed. And it won't let me get out of the game. Hard locked. Fantastic. Oh! Uh shit. So this is a problem. I'm gonna have to restart my computer. But uh it should be okay. Uh, in the meantime, I can award you your VIP badge through my phone. <sighs> what a day. What a day. I'm t too high for this shit. Oh, hold on a minute. Da -da 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 -da. Broke the game. I did. Tried to turn the... That's what happens when you turn the, um... When you turn the graphics up too high. Computer can't take it. Melts down. Says no more. All of this just to see what, see how shitty the game could look. Gotta run Steam again. It's gonna have to patch eight times and then load a load eight million friendship notifications that you can't turn off. There they are. Those will just go. Why? Cause cause Papa Gaben said so. Okay. Let's just... Maybe it'll work this time. Suppose you could find footage of it on YouTube? No. Never. Absolutely not. Bite your tongue. Alright. Alright, so... Establish communications. To be fair, one of the bigger deals of Quake 2 was dynamic lighting. So, like, the little orb of, of light, like, following the beam. The, the fact that light, colored light, can cast on a different... Shut up! Holy fuck! <laughs> okay, I thought it crashed again. So, like like a lot of id software, and especially John Carmack's work, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the technical splendor of the game does come from like lighting effects. But you know, it just kind of looks flat. Um, it's pretty cool that the corner of the room is illuminated as I shoot, but it's just a texture with some flat lighting on it. There's like there's there's light coming out of this sort of, but this is more than likely baked into the texture. It's not actually being cast and rendered that way. They just put a brighter spot on the texture because they knew it would be under that light. Um, and that's some that's like a lot of pre-baked lighting. That's the kind of thing you got a lot back back here because you couldn't really do it any other way. Um, so that's what makes this game a pretty a pretty interesting and ideal pick for revamping the lighting engine entirely to uh, to ray tracing. Uh, and ray tracing is a much more mathematically accurate way of, of calculating lighting. So, uh, video games are nothing but cheats, you know? Kind of like painting the, the part of a floor directly under where a light's going to be a little bit brighter so it looks like the light is illuminating the floor. You know, that's a cheat. Um, but uh, here, now we have the power to actually render lighting as it bounces around the room. We can render light shafts, we can... We can have lights that are able to turn off and on. Um, you can have a mix of global illumination, which is like light coming out of this hole from the sky, mixed with source source illumination, which is you know bolts from this 
from this light. You get those nice little, nice little smoky god rays because it's actually rendering the lighting going through a, what is it, a volume. But does the player cast a shadow? Good question. Uh, sort of, it looks like. That's interesting. It looks like the, yeah, there we go. Wow, cool. I didn't even look at that before. That's a, it almost looks like the shadow is a 3D model of me, but flipped, which is, you know, how they usually do shadows, but it's, it's so diffuse. I wonder why the shoes look so much darker and have like a polygonal aspect to them, but the rest of the shadow looks pretty great. And you know, it's a, it like goes away. The shadow disappears when light from my gun makes it so there wouldn't be a shadow there. That's like, now that never happens without RTX because the way that games are rendered, it just kind of like slaps, it slaps colors on top of colors to create a scene that has the illusion of it all happening. Except that shadows are drawn at a certain point in the rendering process before it does other light calculations. So it's just there, or sorry, after I should say. Um, big tech, so cool, exactly. Screen space effects? Well, so it's it's the opposite of screen space effects. Um, and yeah, that's usually how shadows are done, and specifically screen space reflections. Uh, but ray tracing is, is the, like, philosophical opposite of anything screen space. So screen space literally means that it's something the engine has already drawn on your screen, and we can use it again in some other way. So, uh, yeah, a shadow could be screen space if you take the, the 3D cutout of the person you just drew and then squish it into 2D and put it on a perspective. Also works really well in Photoshop if you want, uh, if you want, uh, if you want to learn how to do cheap and dirty, it's so bright. People like really bright games. It is. Um, I've noticed that. Um, global illumination tends to make things quite a bit brighter because I don't think people have really tuned, tuned lighting for it yet. Yeah, this is supposed to be like pitch black. Um, at least pretty close to that in the, it's gotta be just a brightness. Let's see what that looks like. That's a bit better. Here, let's tune it even more. Let's make this look like an id software game, huh? Like, it's pretty wild that the brightness setting is exposure. It's not a brightness slider. It's not just the level of white in the scene. It's actually how much light you're letting into a fake aperture uh, to, to like, again, to, to further simulate how light really hits your eyeball. That's kind of the idea. Yeah, there we go. And that makes some of these lighting effects a lot more striking. You think they will tie in Quake with Doom? Um, there's a time I would have said no, but um, there's some hints that that may be the case. Ugh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Like the water has color and it mixes with the color of the, the beam to like create an entirely new lighting effect. Oh. Oh, and then you get the reflection of the beam too. Oh, baby. These, like, these are pretty simple graphical effects, but you just don't get this stuff in other games. Um, if you do, it's, you know, it's all screen space. The fun thing about screen space too is like, here's something to look for. So if you ever look at the edge uh, of, a, of a reflection, like, what's the word? Uh, clipped or culled by another object. So like where, where a 3D object intersects with a reflection, usually there's a fuzzy line there because without knowing the pixels on the other side of, or what's behind that column, it doesn't know how to blur right there. So it doesn't know how to make a fake reflection. So it like has to kind of have a little border there because there's not there's no data to work with because it's not being rendered on the screen. Ray tracing though can shoot mathematical bullets all around and reflect them out to places you can't see. Oh yeah, there's this cool little thing. I wanna make the air foggier. How do I do that? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, you can like change the sun. Control the sun with a gamepad? What? Oh. 
then like just like that you can change the the color and the lighting and the mood of an entire scene um because imagine this uh on my frame counter it's a it's around 60. um like, imagine you're in a situation where you do have pre pre baked lighting, where you do have to, like, uh, write the lights into your textures. And then the lighting guy's like, oh, we're making the scene blue now. That hits so many pre baked assets. Uh, and you gotta go back and fix them all, otherwise, it's gonna look stupid. All the reflections, so many reflections. Everyone says I should fight my cravings. <laughs> I guess it depends what cravings you're getting. But there's just something that looks so... Uh, I mean, it's it's a big metal fortress with, with horrific uh, 90s video game monstrosities running through them, so... Uh, don't get me wrong about it, but like... Just the way that this light looks and the difference of, of brightness between inside and outside is so much more like just hits the eyes a bit different the way that the light kind of spills over this edge the way this edge here is, is kind of soft but gets harsher based on your viewing angle um those are those are the kinds of things that just don't happen and it's like it doesn't make sense in a screenshot and to some degree it also doesn't even make sense uh even if you know what you're looking for it's it's not a like a huge eye popping effect but it is the sort of thing where it, it just kind of rolls into your eyes and you're like oh this actually looks a little more real. It looks like a little more like something I could actually walk up to. Uh, rooms like this, where there's light coming in through these windows. I do kind of wish, just uh, just for the sake of uh, giving a bit more of a visual aid to showing how the light is propagating in the room, that you could make the the air a little smokier. I do remember the uh, the first version of like Quake 2 RTX uh, was had some pretty foggy interiors and I think I think it maybe it looked a little too garish for some people. Oh they put a window on it. Hey crab foam. So eh. I don't know, I just I really like tech, so I'm uh I'm not I'm not talking so much to hear myself say smart things. It's more like I there are still like technical leaps happening. I just feel like they're getting harder to see. Uh, sometimes. Unless you know the, the full significance of them. Oh, guy. Is this a ray tracing example? This game is ray traced, yes. I thought there was a... Wasn't there a way to get a machine gun on the first level? Something like that? There's a hidden gun here somewhere. I think there's a shotgun back here. Ah! Oh, I kind of want that. Oh, Makia Ga, thank you very much for the 60 years. 60 years, my god. I was 16 five years ago, and now I'm mostly self-sufficient. That's fucked up. <laughs> it is fucked. What's that all about? Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to have a... Happy to have a brief window around while you're growing up and living. Becoming an autonomous adult. Terrifying. First time I, I paid rent full on by myself, I was like, ugh. It's, it's a moment of pride, but at the same time, I'm also like, well, it's this until I die, huh? This is it. At a certain point, there's like, your life still has these shifts, but you kind of like, you have all the tools now, right? Oh, Vant, thank you very much for gifting. A Norwegian tour, thanks for the prime. Crab foam, it's very good to see you again. Wait till you get a mortgage. I I had one once, and yeah, it, it yeah, very much a, a mini panic attack. Signing something that is meant to last thirty years. We're gonna be seeing some year six badges soon. Oh, you're right. Gotta keep on that. I swear to God, there's a hidden gun in this stage, but I can't remember where it is. Oh, whatever. Mayusis, how is my day so far? Pretty well. It's going pretty well. Um. Yeah, no complaints. Been a nice morning. Good news all around. Good conversations. Kind of taking care of some things. I finished... I f well, it still has to get verified, I guess, to make sure I'm not setting up a tax haven. But I finished setting up payroll software 
for my production company. Uh, yeah, there's like a whole fucking thing here I haven't done. Wait, hold on. No, screw it. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not playing this game for maximum gamer style. I've already done that. I've done that before. This is just for the, just for the weed lulls. Jeez, it's through that hole in the wall. You're probably right. Whatever. Just for the lulls. We're just lulling. But yeah, I, I'm, I think Quake 1 is definitely going to have a... It's going to have a ride in, on THC Tuesday sometime soon. I, uh... Look at that... Look at that strobe, though. Doom 3 also did this a lot. Uh... Doom 3 actually did have, uh... The exact kind of lighting that Quake 2 didn't. Uh, it had dynamic lighting. Um, from more than just, like, beams and bullets and stuff. It actually had dynamic lighting from lights. Uh, and they use that a lot in the game. Everyone and every... Ugh, every idiot just said it's too dark. I'm like, oh, you guys don't understand, but that's fine. It's fine. It, nobody has to understand. But the whole point was to have sequences where you're shooting at demons in pitch black, and all you see, the only light you have, is like the red from a, an imp fireball and your own gun, just like strobing. It was the closest thing to like an actual uh, James Cameron kind of firefight. Um, Uh, in a game. And in a way, like, Doom 3 was still very accurate to that sensation of providing, like, an action science fiction shooter experience. And and it was so lighting-driven. Um, and you had to play it dark to get that. But I don't... It almost reminds me of, like, you know how some directors get really out of bed out of shape about motion smoothing and stuff? I feel like it's kind of the same thing. You know? You, uh... Oh. There we go. I said... My gun doesn't cast light. What's that all about? I think that maybe they decided that if, if they made your gun flash like that, because I think it did in Quake 2, if they made your gun blink like that in RTX, it might be a, a seizure problem. Or a photosensitivity problem, I should say. But yeah, I feel like... I remember at the time when, like, everyone was herf durfing about why don't they have duct tape on Mars or whatever. That was my, like turn off motion smoothing moment. I was like, you guys have got to have a little faith that the people who made the game and the way they recommended you to play it is to create an experience. And it's not, like, it's kind of presumptuous for you to just override that by going too dark and then change it and then complain about it. Yeah. Then again, we're, well, man, we're deep into the thoughts now. I've, I've mused about this a bit before, but I think that does predicate a really interesting conversation about, like, how far should you go to meet a game or a movie or a TV show where it asks you to meet it, you know? I think the best kind of media will inspire you to go to places you wouldn't normally have gone, but... Like, how much should be tolerated of a game of, like, learning a system or getting used to controls or... or reading tutorial messages and stuff? Yeah, Doom 3 was way before Dead Space. Uh, J-Part, thanks for the sub. Closest thing to an Aliens game we ever got. I, I tend to think Quake 4 is is kind of more... Like, Quake 4 is definitely more narratively cinematic. And it has you running through alien bases with a squad of, like, very loud personalities that do a bunch of, like, cinematic call-outs while you're, like, walking around. It's like, yeah, they're... Like how their, their, their death animation also has them uh, shooting a lot. Oh. Oh yeah. So you land on a you land on a, a brown alien base and you immediately go into a brown s alien sewer. <laughs> oh, these video games rule. Oh no. Is that one of my one of my boys? One of my hua boys. Uh so Okay, I can see my own reflection in the water. I can't move forward though for some reason. That was weird. All right. Uh, okay, I think, yeah, there must be a, some kind of... Oh, because it thinks I'm trying to swim down. That's why it's getting weird. Alright. So this is something that, um, only four years between Doom 3 and Dead Space, not too far off. Yeah, uh, a lion's share of a, of a generation. That's kind of how I would think about it. But you're right. Uh, chronologically, they're not too separated. They really played Quake, just always opted for Doom. They're, yeah, they're different, aren't they? Um... Quake is a little all over the place, um, tonally. There we go. Why does it have lights on it? I mean, it doesn't matter, but... 
They just stuck two big old green lights on there. I always thought the Quake 2 shotgun was a little, a little soft. But, uh, yeah, so... If you're... Next time you play a video game that isn't all high and mighty RTX, and you see reflection, you can, you can fuck with screen space by slowly scrolling it off the top of the screen. Um, as you do that, most reflections will gradually disappear because it's just the top pixels flipped and blurred out. But uh, as they leave the screen, there's nothing to flip, so they just fade away. Play with it. Uh, that's one of the quote-unquote benefits of ray tracing. It's a small one. It's a small one. Screen space has gotten so good that most people don't even notice it when it's not there. You ever played Quake 2 in forever? It's it's shock. There's some things about it that are shockingly progressive. It has a uh, branching level paths, which um, and it even has like a very small scale hub that you have to move through multiple times to accomplish objectives. It's it's pretty avant-garde level design uh, for I think what 96, 97. I mean, they had, I think, uh, like, Romero had about pushed the limits of what he could do level design-wise with, with all of his Doom work. So, it was interesting they started spreading it out into more of like a... This is not just a, a you know, weird labyrinth for the player to run around in. This is an environment of connected spaces that all have functions that the player has to visit for a reason. Oh. That's pretty cool. What's the Quake lore? Um, Quake 1? You're shooting some Eldritch Terrors. Uh, I actually am not... It's like all witchcraft and... and uh, weird ancient lords. I don't know much about the lore of Quake 1, to be honest. Um, but it's far more spectral and occult. Whereas Quake 2 is you're a space marine shooting space aliens on a space planet. That's about it. Um, Quake 3 is the original Super Smash Brothers. It was a, an online focused arena shooter featuring weird characters from the id software universe. So there isn't much of a... much of much lore there. Um, Quake 4 is a sequel to Quake 2. And you yet again are a space marine on a space planet shooting space aliens. And I like how you can... You can still see some of the like the shiny spots, but only in the part that's that's not shadowed. Or it's it's still there too here, but it's just much 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 less. I don't know. That gradient is really cool. You get that like three levels of lighting because of the, I guess because of these two big lights. Man, Quake was originally meant to be an RPG. Yeah. It was, like, their very first descriptions of it, which I think were, like, in Doom Shareware or something like that, uh, had it, had it as, like, more of a, yeah, first-person RPG. Which, you know, they, they were starting to make those at the time. Uh, Eye of the Beholder style. Which, when I, when I think about it, like, a first-person RPG, like an Eye of the Beholder science fiction RPG, with a fully 3D engine in 95 would have been baller as fuck. I mean, a, a first-person shooter was still the right call, but, and and its software would probably not be the company it is today without making Quake when it did in the way that it did. But uh, now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm thinking about it. I guess the closest we got to that was Anachronox, uh, a JRPG made by Western devs Canadian devs, I think, using the Quake 2 engine. But uh, yeah, that game was fun, man. I I, re I have weird memories of that game. Uh, I have it installed, and I got it all patched up. I want to play it again. That was supposed to be one of the... Or it still will be one of the Cyber Sunday games. Yeah, they, they eventually did Doom and Wolf 3D RPG on phones, which I really wanted to play but never did. I don't know, I was, I was stuck using the garbage phone. I, I got like a, you know, a Nokia brick. I was on my parents' cell phone plan until I could finally afford to buy my own phone. And by that point, those games were kind of on the way out. I don't know, mobile mobile gaming was way more locked to platform then than it is now. And I really didn't want to get an iPhone, so... 
What's up, she thick? I'm just just rambling, blitz, playing space games, dog. Shooting these aliens. I'm gonna be playing this for a bit, and then I got a uh, got invited for a preview of Little Nightmares 2, which is great because I really really like the original. Uh, gonna play that for a little bit, and then moving on to the greatest the greatest game ever made, the greatest story ever told by orators and and storytellers since mankind crowded around the campfire at night and told each other tales of victory and battle. Never has there been a, a heroic tapestry of life experience than Resident Evil 6. So, I'm gonna have to make sure that everything's hitting at just the right time to play that. And then I wanna, I wanna warm back up to Hitman 3. I wanna play Hitman 3 a little more. Now that I'm, now that I've wrapped up my first run of Cyberpunk. I haven't rolled my second character yet, but I think I will tonight. Ooh, cameras! I think these, I think, uh, Quake 2 had cameras, but you had to use them, and then it would just change the view. But still, decoupling the camera control from the player was a pretty big deal, too. I feel like every time I play Resident Evil, it's a different game. Um, okay, so I have two... To me, Resident Evil 6 starts in two ways. One is a really long, like, sequence right in the middle of action where you're, like, running, and there's zombies everywhere, and you're, like, running and jumping over cars, and then you get into a helicopter, and you're flying in a helicopter, and then the helicopter crashes into a building, and then you, like, fall out onto this giant glass plate that's, like, slowly cracking. I swear to God, that was the beginning of Resident Evil 6. And then I played it again, and it just took me to a menu and asked me what campaign I wanted to play, and then I picked Leon, and then you go to, like, the... You go to, like, the weird office place, and then, like, the birthday dinner, and then out into the yard. And it's more of, like... It's actually more classic Resident Evil. What is the beginning of 6? What, what's the actual beginning of that game? I don't remember which one is the actual start of it. Because I swear to God, I've... Every time I... Again, I've played Resident Evil 6, like, three times in my life. Um... And each time, the beginning of the game has been different, I think. I don't know what that means, but that's what it feels like. That was the beginning of the demo you're thinking of. Oh, yeah? Was there a demo? Okay. Yeah, Chris Redfield's campaign, you're in, you're in China, right? Okay, so I gotta use the blue key card. Is this where you have to backtrack? Alien Bunker Installation. I can't quite remember. I do remember there were parts of this game that actually had you go to a place, get a key, and then backtrack, and then, like, take another another side thing, which is, again, pretty different. Uh, that's more like the, the hub-and-spoke hallway design that actually map design came to be, uh, as opposed to, like, the... just the fucking labyrinthine Doom levels, which were awesome, too. Doom 64. That's propping into my head now. Maybe the last game that I can think of that had, like, level design like that until, uh, until we got, like, a medieval dusk. This looks like a door. Alright. Plays the son of Wesker? Yes, Jake. Jake has, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat moves. Jake, Jake's, uh, Resident Evil 6 is such a trip. Resident Evil 6 is another game where it's like, you gotta really ask yourself, how, how much am I expected to meet this game halfway? How suspended is my delete belief meant to be? Because it's asking a lot. And it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Jake is only 20 and Sherry is 26. That is a fun fact. Yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need a lot of lore. Gonna need a need a lot of these gaps filled in. I mean, we got eight coming up. We're gonna have to figure out how the madness of Resident Evil Six connects to everyone's favorite big titty sommelier. I guess the sommelier is not necessarily a winemaker. What is a winemaker called? Not a brewer. A, a, a winer. There's a word for this. There's gotta be. Vineyard owner? Vinter? 
Winemaker? Is this seriously Winemaker? What the fuck? Wine is like all classy and shit. Why is it just Winemaker? Vinter. That's... Or Vintner? That... Vin, Vintner? That sounds a little more accurate. There ought to be some French shit. Some goddamn, like, word that almost makes you gag when you say it. Look at that. I got all twisted up. Got all twisted up. Grape jockey? Alright. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah! I'm move around more. It's supposed to be... It's supposed to be a... Oh, Christ. Let's just call him Jimmy. Alright. Big Titty Jimmy. God. I'm so excited for eight. Uh, I, or, I, uh, I was thinking about this, too. I think about a lot of things, it turns out. But uh, scenes where games revisit themselves, if that makes sense. So Super Metroid is like the first big one I can think of. At the beginning of the game, you revisit the, uh, the last area from the original Metroid. Um, Zelda has some of that stuff where you like go back to the... Um, you go back to like scenes from previous games and it kind of looks like it too. Metal Gear Solid 4, yeah, okay, yeah, Zach. Exactly. Metal Gear Solid 4 was the reason I was thinking about this because of the Shadow Moses thing, which is is kind of a weird, like that that plays weird in that game, but um, I, I'm getting some of those vibes about 8. Uh, I feel like we're entering this phase where like, out, uh, where either either people have been working long enough to put homage to, like, when a series homages itself, basically. Dark Souls 3. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm getting a lot of those vibes from Resident Evil 8. It feels like a self-homage. Uh, like, 7. 7 was a new thing, or an homage to PT, if you want to consider that. Um, but 8 felt very much like, wow, you're in a mansion. You're in a mansion, and it looks like a pre-rendered background from a PlayStation game. Like, yeah. This this is like the cycle back. It's the victory lap game. Um, and I'm real, real excited for that. It makes me hope that it's going to play like a classic Resident Evil, but I already did that with the PlayStation in 2 and 3. Yep, that's for sure. Yep, you're right. I, some, part of me thinks the, the revisit in 3 might have just been because that game got flipped so fast. Aha. Except the final area is in another lab. Yeah. I... I don't know. It's tough. It's like, what's the most opposite from a dusty old mansion? It's, it's a bright, clean lab. So I kind of get the... Most Resident Evils have that part at the end that is so different than the rest of it. And that usually ends up being the kind of the black sheep feeling of the game, I feel like. Whether it's the boat from Seven or... Uh, tried to think of something that felt out of place in six and it's just well it's the whole game uh five was pretty uniform uh there were some castle parts that were a little weird four did four did four have a lab dude i haven't played four in so long Oh, 3 isn't actually the third Resident Evil. Go play Code Veronica, the actual sequel to RE2. So, I remember renting Code Veronica and playing it for like an hour and being like, nah. And I can't rem I think I know why. Um, it's because I wasn't like, to start with, I wasn't... I wasn't super impressed because a lot of the... Uh, I get the significance of it, of like the tracking camera that's in so much of that game. But it actually felt to me like there was too much motion. Like, every every scene had a panning or a tracking camera. And I was just like, I get it. Like, it's 3D now. It doesn't look better um, on my shitty uh, Dreamcast TV. So, there was that. And then there was the, the side character who's like this... Like, Y2K cool J-dude. Who has, like, I think, like, cuffed shorts. And I'm trying to remember. He's got, like, a bowl cut. He looks dumb as shit. And I remember being offended that I was meant to think he was cool in any capacity. Um, I don't remember who that guy at all. Yeah, the Leo DiCaprio guy, yeah. 
I mean, Resident Evil has a history of just taking whatever aesthetic is popular and sh making a character and throwing it into a game. Um, like Jake, I feel like that weird Sam Worthington buzz cut male lead look. Uh, that was a hot flash that came and went. Uh, yeah, now we get now we get basically the Bowsette of Resident Evil, which I like. It's hit or miss. <laughs> the batting average is a little weak. Um, so. At least Jake punches stuff. Yeah, Jake's cool. And he's voiced by... He was voiced by Troy, right? So, I remember Troy swinging hard with that character. And I'm being like, you know what? I really don't want to like this character. But at least this game, like... Everything about 6 understands that everything else is stupid. <laughs> I feel like Resident Evil 6 is the game pointing at itself saying, No, you're stupid. But anyway, yeah, I gotta play 4 again. I was gonna play 4 leading into 8 because it really did feel like... uh my my guess was, and it, it doesn't seem like this is the case at all, but I thought they were going to try to release for Remake and 8 close to each other, and then also make them connected lore-wise. Uh, that's That feels like a thing Capcom would do. Especially now that they're on a bit of a hot streak. Uh, and, and they have never, ever had any restraint when it comes to trying to turn Resident Evil into something else. Uh, I don't know what, but if they're if they're like doubling down on it being a video game property and they're making cool video games with it, then okay, great, throw money at it, please. But it doesn't seem like are they actually remake re remaking RE4? I don't think Capcom themselves have ever come out and said, yeah, we're totally doing it. You know, not in the way that they have with past projects where there's a three second video of a dude just saying, yeah, we're doing it, which is delightful, by the way. We need more of that in this world. Or the Capcom is back video. Man. I love it when games can have per- Or, sorry, when- That's the same thing, right? I love it when, uh... I love it a lot when, um... Video game companies are allowed to be human. I think often, uh... The fandom makes that a very complicated prospect. Which is unfortunate. But... God, God bless the people who are brave enough to put themselves out there still after seeing what uh, what the gamers can do. Wasn't meant to be... I should just start saying people, you know? I think when you talk about gamer passion, you're just talking about people passion. It exists everywhere. Was the RE3 remake announcement done as a surprise or was it known prior to the trailer? I think it was, it was two, I think. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. Two was like the thing that everyone was buzzing about and then they were just like, yeah, we're, we're super doing it. And it wasn't super long after that that they like they were like yeah it's coming out, um, so it was it was man. Now that I think about it, Resident Evil 2 the remake was kind of a case study in how to like do it perfectly, you know, say just enough at exactly the right time, get it done and get it out before people have the chance to fry themselves out on it, and then also it's just like an incredible incredible package. Are you Vendetta Leon as the bad boy? Are Six Leon isn't cute? No, he's not. And that's also that also pissed me off because I liked Re Four Leon quite a bit. Um, his character is dumb as shit, but he looked cool. God, I've never had somebody biff a one liner harder than Leon does over and over. Jesus Christ! You almost you almost want the villains to be like, we should just stop, bro. Like, you cell phoned too many times. This is not- this is just getting sad. You're giving me perspective now. <laughs> this is not what I came for. Oh, man. Ugh. It'd be worth playing RE4 again just to- Oh, that's kind of neat. So, it like- it takes a few frames to- to like adjust the lighting. So when there's no lighting there, you can kind of see like a little shadow. That may also just be, uh... That may also just be a, um... Another graphics effect, I'm not sure. Sure of. R4 Leon has himbo energy. Kinda, yeah. A little bit. He's just a big dumb idiot. God, he's dumb. He's not necessarily like giggly though. He's just dumb as shit. Fuck me, he's stupid. I guess Leon was never smart, you know? That's not a character trait he was ever demonstrated as being. But he like, he's got such nice hair. And you never want to think that a man with nice hair is unintelligent. RE4 Leon is, is MGS2 Raiden? Oh, fuck. That is that is a perfect description. Yeah. Like, the game thinks he's cool, but no one else does? 
Yeah, that that's perfect. Oh my god. He's Dante, which makes sense since Dante started as a Leon prototype. They're identical cool dummies. Maybe Devil May Cry 1 Dante. I think I think like starting with 3 Dante had more of a persona. But I think I agree. I, yeah, I agree with that. That makes that actually makes sense. I knew about the prototype stuff uh, with Devil May Cry, but I never thought never thought to connect that to their character designs. I remember seeing the uh, the like prototype demos for RE4 that eventually did become Devil May Cry. Like the it had the fur jacket and like the there was like a dude with a scythe or something. And then yeah, you had scythe dudes and Devil May Cry. Man, game dev is crazy. I can't think of many uh, instances of that happening now. Most of the time it's like, oh, is this a little force field door? Most of the time I feel like everyone has their like branding in order and they have a, a whole title and theme decided that they're definitely not changing by the time they announce something. I still can't believe that game ends with you riding a jet ski to freedom. Yeah. With like the president's daughter awkwardly hitting on you and Leon being like, what? And then Arr. Sometimes I think those games are more are more genius than I give them credit for. That's the uh No, there's a famous meme there. But I'm not getting canceled today. Nope. Not happening. Did you ever get the night armor for Ashley and RE4? Ah, uh, so I played the death out of that game when it was on GameCube, and I don't know if that stuff was in the GameCube version. It may have been. Let's see here. I remember I remember getting the stupid um, like 30s gangster costume from using the typewriter, I think. Uh, maybe I didn't get like everything. I vaguely remember that. I don't know if I, I got that or I've seen a video of it at this point. I don't know where I'm going. What am I about to do? On the entrance to the supply station. Alrighty. Bow, bow. I feel like I'm going backwards. I'm definitely going backwards. That, this hallway looks cool. It's so simple geometrically, but... All the work done on the texture and the lighting really gives it a sense of uh, texture and depth. The floor looks a little flat. You'd think that'd be a little shiny. Maybe that's too much shine. I wasn't on the GameCube version? Okay. That's kind of what I thought. Because um, I remember playing the, that game to death, and un, un, I thought I un remembered unlocking everything. But, uh, yeah, I didn't recall getting that or playing with that. So this is what's down here. This is a creepy empty room. Just got a tapioca ball straight to the uvula. Oof. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that. You gotta like suck with your tongue pursed. Blah, blah, blah. So it gives it all like a little, a little, little meat mattress to land on. It doesn't just fire right down your throat. Damn it. I've been, oh, do I have to shoot this? I do. All right, well, forgot it's doom. Or it's Quake, whatever. If you want to interact with something, well, you got a gun in your hands, idiot. Oh, you think there's a use button here? Hey, what's up, Dimmy? Oh, I'm getting shot! No! Alright. I want to play the Star Wars Doom clone that came out in 95 called Dark Forces. Only found out it exists the other day. I, uh... I haven't played Dark Forces much because it's a bit too old for me. Um... Like the the Doom knockoff shooters are just a touch on the just a touch before I'm I'm really comfy playing a shooter, um, but it's a pretty good game. I have played through the sequel, an FMV game called Jedi Knight, which has the same protagonist, but well the title might give you an indication of where it goes. But uh, I love it because it's got full motion FMV. It's got real people being Star Warsy. You might have seen clips of it in, uh, in MediaTek. But yeah, that is the sequel to the game you're describing. It's great. That was back when LucasArts was, was shredding out the bangers, too. Full motion. FMV video.
I don't know why they called it that. Full motion video. Okay. Like, if we call it video, people might not get it. Alright. Because it's like we have animations and stuff. Okay, alright, well. But full motion video doesn't mean that it has to be, like, actors. But I guess there was no other video at the time. No, they had pre-rendered stuff. That was also considered FMV, though. It was basically like pre-rendered video. It's really what it was. I don't know why they called it that. I don't know. People didn't know what they were doing back then. Everything's fixed now. <laughs> There's the supply station. How do I get up there? This doesn't have a static background. Yeah, I don't know, man. Who knows why things are named what they are? There was one of the, I had one of those moments the other day, and I wish I could remember the word. But you know, whenever you just like you just think like, oh my god, it's called a headphone because there are phones on your head. Fuck me. Like, there's moments like that. Where just you, you just lose a little respect for somebody in the past because they just named it exactly what it is. I can't remember. There was a word like that, and I was like, oh, that's why they call it that. Damn. Yeah, maybe it's an epiphany. I feel like it's a. I feel like it's a specific, a specific version of an epiphany, though. What the shit? I'm stuck again. It's too gray, too dark, lighting is too good. Not a door? Thank God. Okay. Oh yeah, grenade. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Why is he using grenades? Is that really like a flare gun? For real? I don't... That wasn't in the game. Maybe it was, and I just never, ever used it. There's, like... Yeah, a flare gun. There is a whole, like... Uh... Inventory system to this game, which is also pretty wild. It doesn't often matter. But there... Are, you can, like, carry a quad damage and use it when you want. You can tab through healing items and upgrades and... Well, not really upgrades. Adrenaline gets used as soon as you pick it up. Yeah, it's kind of a neat effect on the flares. I think that might be why they put it in, just to, so you can squirt down spotlighting somewhere. Oh, I got him. Squished him up. That's environmental inactivity, or environmental interactivity there. There's some items there, huh? Yeah, let's go get them items. Nope. Try again. Eureka moment? Mm. This looks uber dark on stream. This is being played on an HDR monitor. No, I did turn it way down, though, to make it look more realistic. So I guess it is sort of trying to mimic the look of an HDR display. I don't know. I, I'm i going to get out there and say it. I think maybe all of our displays are too bright all the time. I'm going to get out there and say it. Um, I got a new TV a while ago, and then I, I like did the setup or whatever and then I did like the Xbox calibration and or the the calibration on the Series X for HDR and all that stuff and it took me a couple of days I I would sit down and be like it's so dark but once my eyes sort of got used to it and it did get used to it then the like I don't know things just look less video gamey uh which is you know they're still video games but um I do like I do like seeing actual black instead of darker gray and the whites the, like the lights still look really bright uh and i guess it's all about contrast but everything is dark as possible for 3 a.m web browsing so it's part of that too i also just like my displays darker in general i'm always a night mode Ooh, i got tricked i got tricked trick 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 tricked oh geez well, I, I thought i just saved Oh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, don't shoot me! I'm so hurt. I gotta do this again. But now at least I know where I'm going? Question mark. Yeah, this is the beginning of the stage. Ah! Guy stuck under there. Nice. 
OLED is for pussies. <laughs> I'm into QLED. Yeah, I got a... I think I got an OLED. I I don't know. I didn't spend a ton of time researching the, the panel, which I probably should have. I was more about something that supported 120 hertz 4K. Um, which, man, having a TV that can do 120 hertz is... Oh, oh, oh. It's so good. Is this timed? No. Oh boy, I'm already stuck, for real? Come on. This was supposed to be light speed. Two hundred forty hertz, five K. Wait, what? Does that exist, or is it just better? Because it is better, but never bigger. So that opens this. Now I, I oof. Oh, super shoddy is three. Weird. Okay. Hold on. There was stuff down here. Dumb is what it is. What do you mean? No, the numbers are bigger. Dumb? I don't understand. Our eyes run at 8,000 hertz, all right? I wonder what would happen. Huh, well, I guess you just wouldn't see it. Never mind. I know that, like, there was concern in, in the 50s or the 40s and the 50s of, like, subliminal messaging. That by feeding imagery to people that they could control their behavior or influence them to buy certain things. So it was experimented with, but I think ultimately there were far more uh, resilient techniques to manipulate people than flashing messages on screen. However, if you could, if you could like, hit the timing of the brain... Instead of just doing, like, 29.97 or 23 frames per second... If you could reach a frequency of imagery that synced up with how the brain processes images or something, it stands to reason that it might be possible to start drilling in there uh, and, and mucking around some of the wiring. Then again, I think, I think this has been explored in uh, several science fiction stories, you know? A VR helmet that drives people crazy! Why am I not a, a famed movie writer? Nobody has my creative process of getting baked and playing Quake 2. Shit! Not again! Fuck. Oh, I should have saved. Christ. Hey, what's up, Nelizzi? I'm doing great. How are you doing? You played Let It Die. I did. Um, I really, really wanted to like it, but I didn't play it enough to kind of get it. Uh, that's because it, like, on paper, it's it's everything I should love. It's like a Suda, a Suda developed roguelike, um, with like a it was supposed to be like games of service. I don't know if it's been patched or uh, or anything like that since coming out, but I didn't quite get it right away, uh, and I didn't put in the time to come back to it, unfortunately. But I would like to. I, I believe there's a cool game there, and I want to talk to I want to talk to that Skelly more. I like that Skelly guy. Thought I was good at games. Ah, I'm just warming up. You know, it's the it's the ray tracing. It's probably the rays. It has something to do with the rays. That's probably what's going on here. Don't worry, I'm getting better at this stage though. Look at me fly through it. Zoom. Oh, and I'm gonna pick up this health. Didn't do that last time. Prompt to go away. My livelihood is being good at games. I want a Resident Evil game that's only about the doggies. Oh man. It's been stuck in my head lately. The... The Umbrella Chronicles. Because that game like keeps working in bits from the movie. There's a part where Ada Wong like does a wall kick and slow-mo kicks a dog. Like I f totally forgot happens in the first movie. I need to play that game because it was weirdly incorporative of the Paul W. Anderson film into, like, Resident Evil canon. Um, but 
unfortunately, in Resident Evil, there aren't too many good pettable poochie woochies, which is, is rather tragic. Yeah, it's all the bullet, the ricochet of the bullet is the, uh, since it has the ray tracing now, it, uh, it just keeps, uh, making the bullets bounce around them. And then I get shot with the bullets, so. Uh, it's, it's really because I'm good that I'm dying, if you think about it. Okay. You can pet them once they're dead. Yeah, uh, re-dead. Another dead. They're all hiding. Look at these guys. The reading of Ari the other day made me want to play the games more than anything else. Yeah. I, I, I really got into that mood, too. It was... I know that I drunkenly slurred it at the end, but it was it was genuinely cool to see in 98 somebody kind of get the moments and the beats of the game. And and I don't think it was a successful narrative adaptation, but it was cool to, to like, for a person who had obviously not played the games to actually understand the, the small little spiritual things about it that would uh, resonate with people. That was cool. <sighs> yeah, I know, Isaac very rare state for me to be in you have to admit though I haven't been uh, I haven't been sloppy much lately unless you count this does this count Ooh! I don't think this counts I haven't canceled myself yet it doesn't doesn't count until I cancel myself and that's like that's either that's either with a gamer moment or like exposing myself on stream or I don't know. <laughs> you ever hit a bong so hard you vomit? Maybe that'll be me. <laughs> what a Twitch clip, man. Shit, now I'm thinking about it. That's funny. First sorry, two movies are pretty good, then they start becoming their own thing. They... Yeah? To me, they... They become like an alternate canon of the video games. It's kind of how it felt. Like... Because once Wesker's in there, and especially, like, Jill and some other RE characters, and then the plot certainly, I think, is pretty thematically in, in line with where Resident Evil can go. Oh, Lizzie, thank you very much for the sub. Apology cam dead? Wait, what? What do you mean? Oh, it's still there. What are you talking about? I remember when was the thing to take a bong rip, take a shot, and chug a beer. I think it was in waiting? Oh, man. I've never, I've never done that. That sounds awesome. Don't drink, kids. Don't drink and drive. Oh, right. There's a door down there. It's too dark. Somebody ought to brighten this up. Who made it this dark? I don't agree with this at all. This doesn't look good to me. I'm going to change it based on my arbitrary whim. Actually, this does look really good in here. I love this, like, low-light, moody red. Again, a very kind of James Cameron's Aliens feeling. Surrounded by paneling and machinery with big scary aliens outside. But it's kind of like James Cameron's alien seen through the filter of a very like very rad like 13 year old dude who just like has some ideas and he has like a notepad and he's got a notepad filled with scribbly alien drawings. <laughs> it's like yeah they got a spike for one arm and a hammer for the other. Because then they spike you on one arm, and then they smash your head with the hammer, man. And then they sling off the body. It's sick. That's the dude. That's the dude who watched James Cameron's Aliens. He's like, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I think I get it. And then he wrote a screenplay, and it was this. I'm getting my, uh... I'm getting my, uh... My artistic forms mixed up, but you understand. Any more stone directors? Ah, there's been a few of them. Maybe more than you'd think. There's entire movies about weed. Which... I gotta I gotta be honest. And this is gonna be heresy today. McClippy, welcome back. Uh... Welcome back. <laughs> I, I apologize. I really do. Thank you much for the... the you, you're even giving me money. Come on. You gotta be mad. Um... I do apologize. You've been such a wonderful member of the... Stream community. Why would I ever do that? Oh, because there was an enemy on it, probably. Yeah! 
Also, like how the... Like, that's... I remember Half-Life 2 s started to introduce that, the, like, dynamic lighting and contrast. But you notice that... Oh, I almost fell off. Okay, so if I look headlong into the lava, the entire screen kind of dims out. Um, and everything else is super, super dark. Well, I'm looking directly into lava. If I look back at the floor, it kind of comes back up slowly, and then everything else is, a, is brighter again. So it meant to sort of replicate how your eye will contract and dilate to let light in, which is pretty neat. Icone exhaustion? I thought it was... Is it exhaustion? Uh, Hylar just driving the buggy in Half-Life 2 stream. <laughs> the airboat? <laughs> Buzzing around. Shooting a headcrab. Those were those were some great moments in Half-Life 2. The kind of like more open traversal sequences. There wasn't really any... Like sometimes there'd be a track to get you really, really juiced as you head out, but very quickly it would just sort of fade into quiet. Quiet and environmental audio, and it'd just be you buzzing along all by yourself. Those moments are like... Oh, that's a... Okay. Those moments are like, kind of dreamlike almost. The atmosphere of that game will stick with me forever? Yeah, it... Most of the places in Half-Life 2 feel like like a really lucid dream that I have. Crazy? And I can feel like... I feel like I can go back there. Uh, and ex like experience, feel it and hear it, and almost, almost smell it again. One of those kind of things. So so powerful. Alex Alex had shades of that. Maybe I should play it again. But no, I remember. Yeah, there's some environments in Alex, especially because you played in VR, that really do feel like a waking dream. Clippy, thank you very much for the cheer. Glad you're taking it, taking it in stride. It can be a cruel world out there, and I feel for you. God, this, these reflections, though. You're getting even reflections from the surface of the water down, which is pretty cool. I guess it's just in a radius around you. I don't think I've ever seen a game do that. Uh, maybe I have. That's got to have been done before, but... That's pretty, that's pretty fancy. Like a liminal space sort of thing? Yeah, a little bit. Um, Grand Theft Auto V had some, some moments like that. Uh, I think it's... Honestly, I think so much of it is environmental audio. Um, I... Because I think... I think people are good with the video. Video games get the video part of it right a lot of the time. But I really do think what, what makes those spaces so memorable and intoxicating to be in is the sort of audio profile created when you're standing there. And GTA V is, is so phenomenal. Red Dead 2 as well with that sort of thing. I think Cyberpunk had had shades of that. Not quite as complete, <laughs> unfortunately, but still just like real, real kind of like borderline masterclass work uh, in, cr in creating a, a whole reality just through audio. Half-Life 2 does not age well at all. I haven't played it in a while. Uh, I, did a, I did a playthrough again a few years back, um, and... The magic wasn't quite there, but maybe I'm just not remembering it. Uh, or I'm remembering it differently, because I can't recall it very explicitly right now. Um, I was most of the way through Half-Life Source, and I wanted to play through all those titles too. Like Opposing Shift, or sorry, Opposing Forces, Blue Shift. I guess I wanted to do... Uh, is Black Mesa fully out? Last I, last I heard, it was like it was out, except Zen still wasn't finished all the way. It was like the first half of Zen, or something like that. Black Mesa's 1.0? Okay, okay. Because, uh, yeah, every time they would hit like a new 0.0, .0 something, there'd be a wave of headlines. And at some point, I was just like, all, all right, uh, I'm, I'm down, just, just let me know when. So, I think the I think maybe then the goal is I'll finish Source, then play through Black Mesa. Uh, then go back to Opposing Forces and Blue Shift. Although it doesn't seem like that lore is going to be super important. Man. That just looks so good. I'm excited for games to look like this now. To me, this is... This is what games can look like in this generation. Oh, I'm so excited. 
They're working on 1.5 Shine Up the Old Stuff Edition. What is that like? Like voice acting and stuff? Those enemies kind of look like Adam fucking Smasher. They kind of do. Yeah. Man. It was so good to finally get like a... They did a good job designing his character, which is a shame because you see it so rarely. Or maybe in the playthrough that I did, you do. Oh, I can't wait to play that game again. I gotta see more of these endings. I'm kind of scared, man. Some of those endings were rough. Really, there's the first one. It was so bad. It was so bad. Ah, it's a PlayStation it is. What? Oh. A moron. Also. Uh. That, like, reflected light through the fan on the wall. Looks so cool. Uh, which one did I choose? I did the, um, well, is anyone worried about spoilers? I don't know if you guys are worried about spoilers. Can you play some more with Dragon Quest XI? Uh, yes. Although, I don't know if it's going to be entirely on stream. Um, I'm about to finish Cross Code. I'm finally in the last dungeon on that. And then I'm going to, I'll have another, like, games that I try to, like, cultivate or progress in off stream. Uh, Dragon Quest might be that one because it's just so long and to some degree the the uh the story's a little pretty episodic right kind of like classic jrpg style each town has its own little story beat character it is like a few an a few seasons of a, a fantasy anime with a complicated menu are you playing the full little nightmares too or just a demo preview it is the full game but out of respect to the developers, uh, and because of their request, I'm only going to play the first three levels. So I won't play the entire game, uh, and never will, on stream. I don't know, I don't I don't like doing that for smaller experiences like that, unless it's a game that's been out for a few months at least. So, full game, no demo, starting from the beginning, first couple levels. And I'll be doing that very shortly here, actually. Uh, maybe, this, maybe do this one level and then... Uh, Take a little break, move over. I'm excited to see it. Ah, uh, so excited. How long is cross code taken up for you? I'm up to the desert area. Um, I'm almost at like 50 hours, but I've also done a lot of side content. And some of the side content also does involve getting lost for a little bit. There's a there's a fair amount of like, like map exploration required to sort of navigate to some of the quest objectives. So I don't know how much of it was spent kind of spinning spinning wheels. Um, if you if you mainlined the... Uh, oh, I probably had to stand on that. Um, if you mainlined it, that game could probably be maybe 30 to 40 hours, but... Ooh. It's a thick game. It's a shockingly thick game. There's very, very little... Uh, very little not done in that game. What are you... Did I hit the button twice? No, it's coming back out. No, no, no. Oh. Wait, why do I want to get on that? Maybe I don't have to. Alright. Got the soft... Ugh. The glow from his stupid little video... Stupid little gun is just so... So warm and diffuse and immediate. Ah, it's hard to believe that it can look like that and the frame rate can still be pretty high and playable. I really want to... Uh, maybe Tetris Effect had some of this stuff in Connected, but... Uh, I feel like there's, there's such a possibility to just create trippy-ass visual sequences. And it seems like the easiest way to do that is with, uh, like, music, rhythm, and puzzle games. So... Why not just make a sparkly lights and sounds? I want to I want a ray traced Peggle 3. I want a ray traced Match 3. Did didn't Honey Pop 2 just come out? Did that actually happen? Oh. Spooky room. Look at how spooky this room is now. Oh. Oh man, the the way the like shadow angle just drapes across the wall 
as the bolt like flies past. Oh. Like up here. So pretty. So pretty. That did just happen? All right. Oh, baby. Just in time for Wednesday. Actually, wait, is there any way to make that game not porny? It probably is, right? If it's on Steam, it has to have a listing that isn't just X-rated. Man. Two weeks in a row we got got horny, uh, horny anime <laughs> mobile games. I think I'm sold on RTX. That wasn't that wasn't the intent, you know. Nvidia is not sponsoring me or anything. Um, I just there's there's no question that as a as a rendering technique it will be superior. Uh, I think it just takes time, and uh, people have to cultivate a level of expertise for what works in a game. I don't know why I jumped up there. Kind of get my ass kicked though. A little low on health. Oh. Three's horny edition. Oh, I think I could be. Well, I don't want to get. Never mind. I got to remember. Like people get frighteningly good at mobile games. Like scary good. Gamers like to think they game hard, but man, until you find a, you, you see a, you see like a grandma just burn the shit down and bejeweled, and you're like, yeah. Nah, everybody's like that. Everybody's competitive. Whoa, ooh, ooh, ooh. There's, there's some stories about. I uh, nah, I don't think I'm at liberty to share. Steph used to uh, work, work for PopCap, so she's a. Uh, she knows a bit about different gaming communities. Anyway, Peggle Three, we need it. I want to like. I want to get an Ultra Extreme Fever in Peggle 3 and be physically incapacitated. Power Cube acquired. Uh, to restore power to the warehouse. Oh, I need four Power Cubes. Well. Ninja has his own comic? Ah, uh, okay. I can't. Whatever. He's trying to expand the Ninja brand. Is it good? Where can I... Where could one read the, the Ninja brand comic. I like to I like to think that uh, I'm inspired by Ninja on a daily basis. I kind of view him as a, a father figure. Even though he's younger than me. He's very wise. Yes. He's he he understands the gamer mindset. Uh, the artist is really good. I follow him and his artist his art is really good. Well, then at least it's halfway to being a good comic already. exclusively at Ross or some shit. Next time I go for smart but sensible uh, work clothes, I'll pick up a copy of Ninja Number 1. Is this another cube? Or did this is a cube I already got? That's a cube I already got. Oh, found my way to the box warehouse. Sorry, I'm trying to Trying to fancy foot a little bit. So, oh, ah, well, that's that then. Man, this game just looks really cool. Yeah, it's time for boxes. Wouldn't be a sick video game if we're in a box factory. All right, I'm gonna do a very cool and manly thing and try to shoot everybody from this event. I don't know if this is gonna work. Totally works. Wanna, I don't want to get into safe scum territory, but we might be there due to my sloppy, sloppy play. Do I have... Hmm. Well, sometimes... Sometimes uh, there's like a health item you can carry. Ah! I can, damn it. The way they do that, you kind of have to take a hit. Oh, wait. I see health. It's like just... Uh, okay. Y'all have been relaxing, then become anxious about how you're not relaxing properly and ruin your relaxation? 
Oh, yes. Very familiar with that. Uh, I believe, or I'm growing to believe, that, um... Or I'm, I, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. The longer I spend in this body and in this brain, the more I learn about it. And, uh... What I'm, what I'm playing with now, in that situation, this is an interesting idea, and I don't know what I feel about it yet, so I'm not giving advice here, I'm just, I'm just providing narrative, that's all. Um, when those emotions occur, it is my tendency to analyze it immediately. Why am I feeling this? What do I have to do? Give me something to fix, you know? Some of that's, uh, I guess could be like the engineering mindset. Stereotypically, a kind of a dude mindset. Let me fix the car. Let me fix the machine. So I can so I can properly chill out like I'm meant to right now. Uh, and s what I'm trying to do to to not harsh my vibe, to not uh, to not to not stay in that state, is to uh, to not question the feeling. I guess if you're going to if you're going to feel that that anxiety or whatever, then just feel it. Fuck it. Whatever. You don't know why it's there. It may be butting in, and that's a little annoying. You can feel annoyed too, but just to kind of sit in it and and kind of let it do its thing, rather than try to find out how to get rid of it or let your mind spin on that topic. That's difficult, though, and that's that's kind of uh, to me or or my limited understanding. Approach is something more like uh, meditative training. To just rather than rather than like analyze your state of being to just be in it and allow it to be well you never questioned the horny well I mean it is what it is I think uh, as much as we'd like to we don't control how we feel but we can control what we do so but you're right horny is as horny is gonna be only fools fight horny True champions learn how to ride the wave. There's got to be a power cube here, right? I feel like I didn't pick anything up down here. I just came down here and went back up. Or, I guess I hit a button. And this thing's moving now. But it just goes up here. Where are you? That's a cool skylight, though. Oh. I respect horny, but I don't get horny for anyone but my loving wife. Yes. Oh, well, okay. I guess it opened that door. My wife, whom I love very much. Sometimes anxiety is super painful. I think that's the aversion. It's that exhaustion of sitting in a prison of yourself. It's always temporary, but it's hard to tell someone in that prison, you know? Not that I don't 700% agree with you. Uh, yeah, the... So that's... That's, that's, I think, where it goes beyond my ability to, to, to relate, unfortunately, is when the feeling of anxiety causes, like, physical response. When it, when it makes it difficult to breathe or makes your stomach upset. When it, when it incurs physical pain. Um, yeah. That's, to me, that's where, unfortunately, I think any of my, my mental... Experimentation. My mental experimentation kind of loses its value because I'm lucky enough to not to not suffer from that. I'm in the middle of a month-long anxiety attack at this point. Oh, Jesus Christ, Alder. Out. How? I didn't know humans could do that. Uh, I mean, I'm glad you are. I mean, I'm not glad you are. You know what I mean. I'm glad you're enduring somehow. Uh, Who? Hopefully there's a way to get that out. That's where the concept of crippling anxiety comes from. Shit's rough. Yeah. The... Man. It is... It's such a weird dynamic. Uh, people that either struggle to empathize with or, or either are incapable of understanding how... Uh, how... How brain chemicals can, can straight up have a physiological effect. And it seems so obvious on the surface, but maybe it just has... 
it'd just be so much. It'd just be so nice, you know, if you could slip on a VR helmet on somebody, and just for the sake of empathy, have them experience anxiety, like that level of anxiety for like thirty seconds. That's it. Where am I going? Return to Ammo Depot. I guess I got all the cubes. All right. What headphones am I rocking? These are Sennheiser H HD 58X. <sighs> Watching your Resident Evil? Yes. Man, that was so fun. I had so much fun. Ace, thank you for the resub. <laughs> New game, Anxiety Inducer 9000. Yeah, I feel like maybe Catherine might be the closest. I'm trying to think of games that make me anxious. Uh, streams have been a real help lately. So glad to have a place to de-stress. I know I'd be doing a lot worse otherwise. Well, man, I'm glad to provide that place. It's like, to some degree, I feel like it might be a little karmic. I'm allowed to exist in a, a realm of zero stress, so I have the luxury of providing a, an environment like that to others. But enough of that. Let's play a stressful game. Uh, let's move on to Little Nightmares 2. So, game's not out yet, but it'll be back soon. Uh, this weekend, I think, but I arranged an extra special preview. Because I love you all so much. Alright, I'll be back soon. See you guys then. Oh, yeah.